one of these three men has often been referred to as the greatest racing car driver in the world. What is your name, please? My name is Sterling Moss. What is your name, please? My name is Sterling Moss. What is your name, please? My name is Sterling Moss. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Sterling Moss and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Betty White. My name is Martin Gable. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. <laughs> Martin, very nice to welcome you to our panel tonight. Delighted to be here, Bud. And we're just as proud as you are, I'm sure, that your play, Once More with Feeling, is doing so well on Broadway. I'm very pleased, and I'm particularly pleased that you were thoughtful enough to mention it. Oh, not at all. <laughs> all right, and welcome back to you, Betty. Thank you. Nice Christmas? Nice to be here, and a lovely Christmas. Good. Now, these three gentlemen, as you heard, all claim to be Sterling Moss. Only one, of course, is the real Sterling Moss. The others have merely assumed that identity. Now, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it. I, Sterling Moss, am an automobile racing driver. Both my father, who was a dentist, and my mother were top amateur racing drivers in England. I started driving racing cars in competition at the age of 17 and have been at it ever since. I have driven for Mercedes-Benz and also for the great Maserati racing team of Italy. I have won more World Championship races than any other racing driver in the world. Signed, Sterling Moss. All right, panel, you heard these three gentlemen all claim to be Sterling Moss, champion racing car driver. Only the real Sterling Moss, of course, is required to answer your questions truthfully. We we'll begin tonight's questioning with Martin Gable. Martin? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number three. Bud said that your father was a dentist and became a racing driver. His clutch mustn't slip. <laughs> ah. May I ask you, number three, who was Sir Malcolm Campbell? Well, he was a famous British racing driver before the war. I see, a racing driver. Number two, who was the Marquis de Portago? Uh, Marquis de Portago was a Spaniard, sp Spanish nobleman um, who was killed, unfortunately, in the Mio Miglia. Number one, what is a pit stop? A pit stop is when a car comes in to take on tires or fuel or change of drivers. How long does it take to ch change a tire during a pit stop? Um, the record is... 60 gallons of fuel, four tires in 32 seconds. Nice. Kitty Carla. Number one, what is the fastest you've ever gone in a car? Uh, 265 miles an hour in an MG. Number two, have you ever gone 265 miles an hour? Yes, I have, but not in an MG. In a what? Maserati. Number three, what is Monza? Monza is a, a racetrack in Italy. It's just outside Milan. Number one, what are the outfitters in England where you can buy, uh, where you can rent tails and so forth? In uh, London? Well, there's Moss Bros. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, what is the fastest you've ever taken a curve? Around 70, 80 miles an hour. And he does mean around. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Gardner. Number two, uh, in what famous race uh, did uh, Ruby Rosa uh, race about two years ago? I don't know. I don't know. Number three, uh, is it true that the only life insurance that a racing car driver can get uh, must be bought on a 24-hour basis from Lloyd's of London? No. Uh, uh, number three, again, uh, uh, do you get any particular premium on your life insurance as a professional or amateur racer? Oh, yes, we have to pay a very high rate. What is the high rate? Well, it's about uh, 50 times the normal rate. Uh-huh. Number one, uh, uh, who is uh, a fellow named Ken Purdy? Uh, Ken Purdy is an American writer. Uh-huh. Number two... Betty White, please. Thank you, Bud. If your father was a dentist and a racing driver, did he insist on filling his own tank? <laughs> <coughs> 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 
What is a... Uh, <laughs> number two, what is a tachometer? A tachometer? Mm-hmm. Uh, Tachometer is uh, an instrument used in racing, on the racing cars, on uh, the sports car racing. What does it show? Uh, it shows the, um, the actual uh, curvature of the track. Number three, uh, and a Mercedes 300 SL, what does the SL stand for? I don't know. Uh, number one, what does the SL stand for? I don't know. Number two, what does the SL stand for? I don't know. That makes four of us. That's well. <laughs> well. On that note, I'm afraid we'll have to say that it's time to vote. And without consultation, as is our custom, will you please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers, of course, will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All right, panel, have you marked your ballots? Yeah, Betty, for whom did you vote? Well, I don't know. I was all set to vote for number two, but he didn't sound like he knew a lot more about a tachometer than I did. I'm going to go for number one. With number one. I'm <laughs> 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 kind of afraid you're the crazy guy. Because if you go for him, you wind up going with him. So. <laughs> Martin, your vote, please. I voted for number three, but there was something about his whole manner in, in answering that led me to believe that he was the real Sterling Moore. Okay, Kitty, your selection. Well, I could go for number two, but I went with number one. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing questionable. I think you misled me with Kent Purdy. I don't know who Kent Purdy is, but I think you misled me. All right, hi, Gardner. Well, Kent Purdy is a racing car uh, a writer on a number of magazines, and uh, I voted for number two because I don't see how number one racing in England would know about Ken Purdy. All right, fair enough. There we have it. Our votes and our reasons for them, and we see whether we're they right or wrong. Kent Purdy. As we, <laughs> as we discover right now, which one of these three gentlemen is the real champion racing car driver? So, will the real Sterling Moss please stand up? Thank you very much, sir. No, oh, he didn't mislead me. <laughs> no, he didn't. Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you actually do, please? My name is Tony Brazil. I'm a sales representative in New Jersey. And number three, what about you, sir? Well, my name is Alan Greaves. I'm advertising director for British Overseas Airways Corporation. Thank you. Checking out the score, we find that there were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro. Gentlemen, hope you enjoyed it. We enjoyed having you with us. Safe driving. Good night. And on your way out, you will find a carton of Marlboro cigarettes for each of you. Good night. Thank you very much. <laughs> we would like, to, uh, we'd like to thank Sports Car Illustrated magazine for helping to make Sterling Moss's appearance on this show possible. And also, I urge you to look in a forthcoming issue of Sports Car Illustrated Magazine. There will be an article on Mr. Moss coming up very soon, so keep an eye out for it. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Anne Labastille Bowes. What is your name, please? My name is Anne Labastille Bowes. What is your name, please? My name is Anne LaBastille Bowes. All right, panel, here we go with another affidavit. If you'll follow along, please. I, Anne LaBastille Bowes, am a naturalist. I studied marine biology at the University of Miami, received my bachelor's degree in wildlife management at Cornell, and got my master's degree at Colorado State University in big game management. I was a tour leader for the Audubon Society and as such was the first woman to guide parties through the Florida Everglades. My husband and I now guide groups of amateur naturalists, mostly bird watchers, through remote areas of the West Indies and Mexico. Signed, Anne Labastille Bowes. Well, you heard these three nice young ladies claim to be Ann Bowes, naturalist and tropical guide. And let's begin this round of questioning with High Gardner. Hi. Thank you, bud. Uh, number three, what in, in bird terminology is a redhead? Well, 
in any terminology, a, a redhead is somebody with red hair. Uh -huh. number, <laughs> number two, uh, what would you say? I haven't heard the term. Number one? The bird with a red head. <laughs> Man or bird, it's a redhead. Uh, number two, where in, in Miami is uh, there a floating aquarium? Well, that, I believe, is in Biscay Park. Uh, number three, uh, uh, where uh, in, in Miami uh, was, did an assassin try to shoot and kill uh, the late President Roosevelt? I don't know. I number don't know one? Miami. I don't know either. Ready? Thank you, bud. Number one, it says you conduct wildlife parties. What do you do on New Year's Eve? <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of wildlife. <laughs> Number one, uh, what, how large is a purple gallon mule? It's about the size of a chicken. And number two, what is a placostomus? A what? A placostomus. A placostomus, Kitty. Of course. Sure. I don't know. Number three, what is a placostomus? I don't think there is any such bird. <laughs> Number one, what is a placostomus? Never heard of it. <laughs> well, well I know that. How is yours, Number Betty? Two, fine, I have three. Good. <laughs> Number two, um, would you tell me approximately how many passenger pigeons there are estimated in the United States? Me? Number two. Oh, Number two. Okay. Mm. Well, there aren't any. Why? Well, they're extinct. Number three, uh, in the Everglades, would you find approximately more crocodiles or more flamingos? Well, there are only seven flamingos in the Everglades. Martin Gable. Thank you, Bud. Uh, number one, Bud said that you went to Cornell University. What is the first line of Cornell's uh, anthem? Far above Cayuga's waters. Very good. Uh, number three, do you run into dangerous wildlife in the Florida Everglades? No, we don't. I'm you don't? Sure. No. Can you define number three, marine biology for me? Well, it's the study of any underwater plant or animal life. I see. Number two, what is a marine element called kelp? Well, it's rather like seaweed. I see. I see. Are you married, number one? Yes, I am. Kitty? <laughs> How many whooping cranes are there in the United States, number one? Uh, approximately 37. Number two, um, what is Quetzalcoatl? I believe that is a Central American bird. Uh, number three, um, what kind of uh, penguins are found at the North Pole? There aren't any penguins in the North Number one, it says here that you went, uh, you go through the Florida Everglades with parties with your husband. Uh, what's his name? Major Bowes. Nick Nick. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm once again to Bowes. So without consultation, will you please mark your ballots, if you please, and select number one, number two, or number three. All right, panel, all marked. Okay, Betty, for whom did you vote as your favorite placus casamasasasapasamus? Well, this is silly because a purple gallon mule is about the size of a chicken, and number one knew that, and number two knew that passenger pigeons are extinct, but number three knew that there are only seven flamingos in the Everglades, and I know what a placosum is. I don't think it's anybody. Mm -hmm. I think it's number three. <laughs> <laughs> How many passengers did these pigeons carry? <laughs> Marty? Uh, well, Bud, I was born and raised here in the northeast part of the United States, and I think I know a Cornell girl when I see one, so I voted for number one. <laughs> Good. And uh, Kitty, your vote, please. Well, I voted for number three. Quetzalcoatl is a plume, a, a, a plume serpent in Mexico. A mountain. No, that's Popo Catata. <laughs> <laughs> and so I voted for number three. Okay. Hi, Gardner. Al <laughs> Kelly is on the yeah. panel tonight. I voted for number two strictly on the Biscayne thing. I had the... Uh, one question I wanted to ask and never got to, and that is, uh, is, is there more wildlife in Miami Beach than in the Everglades? <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know after New Year's Eve. All right, there it is now. We've given you our rhymes and our reasons, and we'll discover how right or wrong, and maybe you will too if you're voting along at home with us, and we hope you are. As we learn now, which one of these three young ladies is the real uh, leader of the wildlife naturalist and tropical guide? So will the real and bows please... Stand up. Very 
nice. Now, number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Ann Nixon, and I live in New York, and I'm a housewife. Good. And number three, what about you? My name is Babette Doniger. I live in New York, and I produce and direct films for public relations and industrial companies. Thank you. Hi, you have a question? Uh, yeah, I'd like to clear up a question. The, the first question I asked wasn't a, a, a joking question. Uh, what is a redhead in bird terminology? Uh, and I was amazed that, that none of the three girls knew it. A redhead is a wild duck. A wild duck? Right. Well, I'd right. like to clear up something, too. Uh, what are these things of which you have three, Betty? A placosomus is a little thing that looks like a dragon in your tropical fish tank. They're scavengers on the on the. Right next to Quetzal Coatl. Oh, of course. <laughs> As the man said, he's located on the... Uh, Popo Catapel. Uh, sure. Or on the corner of, the of Walk and Don't Walk. Uh, <laughs> What'd you say, hi? That's on the 85-cent blue plate. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Let's double check now and see how well we did. And the panel didn't do too well that time. You girls did extremely well. There were three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Marlboro. Enjoy it, ladies. On your way out, pick up a carton of Marlboro cigarettes, which you also will enjoy, I'm sure. Good night and good luck. <laughs> we'll get back to the game in just... Now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Judith Ann Love. What is your name, please? My name is Judith Ann Love. What is your name, please? My name is Judith Ann Love. Another affidavit panel, will you follow along, please? I, Judith Ann Love, am a school teacher turned professional dancer. I've studied dancing since I was three years old. I saw a small chance of ever making a career in show business, however, so when I graduated from college, I accepted an appointment to teach the fifth grade in my local public school system. In March of 1957, I decided to make a try. I came to New York and auditioned as a dancer. I got the job and ever since have been dancing as a member of the world-famous Rockettes at Radio City Music Hall. Signed, Judith Ann Love. All right, panel, these three pretty ladies all claim to be Judith Love, Radio City Music Hall Rockette. We'll begin this round with Betty White. Betty? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number three, what is the prescribed height for a rockette? Well, the minimum height would be five foot four, and the maximum height would be five foot eight. And number two, how many rockets are there all together? There are 46, but 36 on stage. And number one, how many days do you work? We work a full week. We work four weeks, then we get a week off, and then a week off vacation. Number two, what is the average age of a fifth grade student? Oh, about 10. Number three, what would you say the average age of a fifth grade student? About 10. Number one, what would you say? About 10. Oh, swell. <laughs> <laughs> number two, where did you go to school? Oh, Pembroke College. And number three, where did you go to college? Tufts University. And number one, where did you go to college? University of Rochester. Oh, that's <laughs> all together. Martin? Uh, number two, there's a new building going up across the street from the music hall, which will house a great nationally known uh, uh, publishing firm. Uh, what's the name of that building going to be? The Time and Life Building. Number one, four blocks north of the music hall, there's a theater that was built and is named after uh, one of the greatest producers, this, theatrical producers this country's ever known. What is the name of that theater? Ziegfeld Theater. The Ziegfeld Theater, right. Uh, number three, who is the managing director of the music hall? That would be Russell Downing. Rusco... Russell Downing. Russell Downing. I see. Uh, are there any qualifications, in number one, regarding physical measurements that a, a rocket must conform to? Kitty? Uh, <coughs> Kitty? <laughs> <laughs> number one, how did you get your audition? Well, a friend of mine was a rockette before, and she arranged the audition for me. Number two, how did you get your audition? I wrote to Russell Markert. Russell Marker? Russell Markert. And number three, how did you get your audition? My dancing teacher wrote to Russell Markert. And is he, uh, what, did, what did George Balanchine, number one, ever have to do with the Radio City Music Hall? I know he's a tremendous ballet choreographer. I don't think Do you know, number two, what he ever had to do with it? No, I've only been there a year. Number three, do you know? No, I do not know. 
We had a fellow on our show once called Baba Tundi Ola Tunji. What did he do, number one? He was an African uh, drummer from Algeria. An African drummer? What did you say he was, number two? He's from Nigeria, and he played the drums in our show about two months ago. And number three, what did he do? He played the drums in our show. Number one, can you tell me how you get to your dressing room at Radio City? Mm-hmm. I take an elevator to uh, the third floor. And how does the curtain work, number two, three? Number two. Uh, it's a contour curtain. It works from the panel board on the right I'll let you right. sneak that one in there. I, <laughs> number one, that was interesting. I thought the music hall was so big they took cabs to the dressing room. <laughs> uh, number three, you said you went to Tuff. Have you any idea of what uh, uh, actor's grandfather was the one of the founders of that college? No, I don't know. It's interesting. It was Sonny Tuff. Very few people know that. <laughs> Number two, what color hair has Russell Marquette? Uh, well, it's sort of uh, dark, and he has a mustache, and he's sort of... Um, Number three, what do you recall his, uh, uh, the color of his hair? Well, it is uh, reddish hair. Uh, number three, has he got very much of it? Uh, not too much, no. Num number two, uh, uh, who is uh, a girl named Linda Lynch? Uh, Would you know number three? That's about it, panel. It's time once again to vote. So, uh, as used before, will you please mark your ballots and select thereby number one, uh. number two, or number three. All set, panel? Ready to be marked? For whom did you vote? I'm kind of sure this time, bud, so I'm bound to be wrong. I'm going to take number two. <laughs> number two. Okay, Martin? I voted for number two as well, bud, because of the way she reacted to the other people right or wrong replies in case maybe uh huh kitty i voted for number two purely on the basis of answers they were all very very sure of their answers and very good and high guard and i voted for number three <laughs> uh actually from where i sit in the music hall her face isn't familiar but <laughs> <laughs> she won by a hair russell marquez hair uh -huh. uh, what he has left is reddish and numbered all right there we have it You've heard our reasons, and we hope yours are as good as we discover which one of these three pretty young ladies is the real member of the Radio City Music Hall Rockettes. So will the real Judith Love please stand up? <laughs> well, you pulled the left out, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? Yes, uh, I'm Victoria Kent, and I'm sales representative for Jean d'Arbray Fragrances in Orlane Cosmetics. Thank you. <laughs> and number two, what about you? My name is Phyllis Bogardis, and I'm an airline sales representative. <laughs> <laughs> also the one with the most answers, apparently. Well, we check up a little bit here, and we find that uh, the panel didn't do well at all, but you did extremely well. There were one, two, three incorrect votes that time at $250 each for, again, a total of $750 from Marlboro. Thank you very much, young ladies. And on your way out, will you also select uh, your carton of Marlboro cigarettes, which I know you will enjoy. Good night. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Well, that's about it for tonight. Our time is all gone, I'm sorry to say. It always goes so fast for me. I know I have such fun that it goes too fast. I hate to realize the half hour is gone. Betty and Martin, thank you both very much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Bud. Thank you, Bud. And uh, very warmly we say to you, come back soon. Thank you. Uh, next week, Polly will be back with us. Oh, and our good friend and uh, old friend on our show, Ralph Bellamy, will be back with us, too. So be sure to be with us. Well, that's about does it for tonight. So this is Bud Collier saying good night and a very happy new year from Marlboro, and reminding every one of you, don't forget, tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Woodson, Bill Cogman production, in association with the CBS Television Network.